All right, guys, welcome back to the field. You know, it's strange in 2024. It seems like I'm not getting a lot of five inch. Years past, rewind like five years ago on the channel. Man, we had like five inch, five inch, five inch, five inch, five inch, and seven inch, seven inch. We've had a lot of seven inch in the last six months and 10 inch as well. Um, you know, it, could that be because of the Ukraine? Who knows? Maybe. Um, but I know a lot of people on my channel love long range. A lot of you guys are not big fans of remote ID. And maybe one of the reasons we're not seeing a lot of five inch and things that are over 250 grams in the first three months of this year, maybe it's because, you know, we had the deadline for RID drop just recently. And here we are with a release from Newbie Drone. It looks like a, a V2 version of the Stinger B. This is the Stinger B HD. It's a three inch FPV freestyle quad with GPS on here, 1404 motors. It has kind of a combination of uh, TPU and carbon here, M2 bolts and some M3 bolts, which add a little bit of uh, robustness to the frame and the way the arms connect to the body. It's also a dead cat and it looks like they're gonna be replaceable arms. Uh, it's gonna be a two part arm assembly here and some TPU motor bumpers on the bottom already for you guys. DJI 03 is sitting in the very back. We have the flight controller. It looks like a, a little miniature 20 by 20 flight controller and a little bit of carbon and some dampening up front for the DJI 03 camera. Uh, and what are the benefits of running a three inch FPV freestyle drone this year, opposed to five inch? Well, first you're not gonna have to register this one. It's under 249 grams. With a, with a 4S 550 milliamp battery. You can get a longer flight time if you go up to like 750. Uh, I took their little strap off there, which I'll show you later when we go to the bench to check it out. But this will be a little more cost effective than a five inch. Motors are cheaper, batteries are cheaper, um, and pretty much everything on here. If you ran this analog, you could probably get this set up for around the $180 price point uh, would be probably the target price for something like this. Now the 03 one, who knows, it's probably going to be three to most likely $400. Um, but at the time of publishing of this video, you guys will see in the link down below in the video description, what this will cost, what the specs are and all that good stuff. But um, yeah, so maybe that's the new trend this year. Maybe, maybe we're moving away from having five inch because of the RID things and, and here in the US and maybe because of what China has going on with some of their new laws on exports of their Chinese drones. Um, something to do with uh, toy classification, uh, also the capability of it becoming a military type FPV drone, you know, in case in point, Ukraine, right? Um, so maybe we're gonna see less five inches here, but I hope that's not the trend that's gonna happen. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And uh, let's just go ahead and fly this one. I'm gonna fire it up on a 4S550 battery today. We'll see how it freestyles and uh, we'll, we'll test out a little bit of uh, mild cinema around the field here. So let's do it. Let's fly this little Stinger B. <laughs>
Guys, welcome back from the flight test. This is the box that you get. This is the drone. Drone by itself weighs 176.4 grams. With a 4S550 milliamp battery, it weighs in at 236.2 grams. The battery that Newbie Drone recommends is the 4S550 milliamp from Tattoo. It's the R-Line series battery. 95C battery, it's pretty good. It keeps you under 250 grams and it gets you about a five minute flight time on this battery. You can also fly a 4S 750 on here, it will fit. And you can get probably around the six to six and a half minute flight time with a 750 milliamp battery. And the largest battery I'd put on here would be something like a 4S 850 milliamp and that would get you closer to 10 minutes flight time on this quad. Now they do make some 3000 milliamp Lions that you might be able to fly on here. Gap RC used to make one that had an XT30 connector on here. This one is one of the Zod ones. It's a 3500 pack, but as you can see about this size, it starts to get pretty big on here. And that would have to, you know, kind of come with some experimentation to kind of just to see if these motors would be able to handle a Lion and not pull too much amps out of the battery. But I think if you're not worried about weight, I think my favorite battery would probably be the 4S 850, getting me the most flight time at around eight to 10 minutes. And I think another advantage of these smaller quads is that we're finally getting longer flight times on these. The eight to 10 minute mark flight time is much better than my uh, bigger cousin there, the five inch. The GPS is sitting right up front and it has a TPU kind of cover over top of it. And it's also an M10Q micro GPS. So it does have a compass built into it. But uh, recently they're saying that with Betaflight, you don't need the compass as much, but it is interesting to see that they put it up front. You can remove it and move it up back if you want. It also has a slot underneath it for uh, if you wanted to put some type of action camera strap. And I've seen this before on uh, kind of quads of the past, but right now this GPS is sitting up front. And if you look a little closer, this TPU mount's actually mounted to two standoffs, one up front right here and one in the back, giving it a little more stability here and for frame rigidity, as well as under here, we have a little bit of TPU, giving a little bit of dampening for the camera. It looks like we can raise that up to about 25 degrees, maybe 30 degrees on the full tilt. Underneath with a couple zip ties and another standoff, giving a little more protection up front for the camera is my Immortal T from my TBS Crossfire Nano. You can see just in there, they left a little slot for you to get to the button with your bamboo skewer to bind it up. And the motors on here are 1404 Newbie Drone motors. They are called Flow and they are 4000 kV. They also have kind of nice bumpers underneath each motor. It covers up the bolts on the bottom of the motor and the edge of the frame all the way around to protect it. And even on the very top end of the frame, which I think is kind of a nice addition. A lot of times these types of bumpers will come around the front, but they don't have any top cover protection for protecting the bell right in front of the motor. That's kind of nice to see that it fits all the way around there, kind of like a boot. 
And we also have motor wire covers going from here to here on each arm of the quad. And if you buy one of these and you're watching this video, they are three inch Gem Fan 3020 propellers. They are tri-blade freestyle props. And I think for what it is, it's a pretty cool looking quad frame. It looks easy to work on, easy to access. It does look like it appears to have six bolt top replace uh, release on there. It has a little bit of a sticky 3M battery pad right here. If you peel the top off, it'll just kind of be sticky for a little while until that wears out. It has extra mounting frames also here and here. And it also uses a combination of M3 screws. So you see the standoffs right here have M3 screws, four on the top and then we have two M2 screws in the back. So when you're taking this top plate off, you have to have two different style driver, uh, M3 and M2s on the bottom. It also uses kind of a combination of the M2 bolts here, and here we have the M3s again. And at first I was kind of like turned off by the fact that I had to grab my M3 driver uh, outside my M2, but you know what's nice though is that it gives the frame extra rigidity. Most frames this size, a lot of times I see them using M2 all the way around, and that's that's kind of sweet, but the advantage of having an M3 bolt through the arm is, well, you get a little more uh, rigidity out of this frame and maybe a little bit more durability. It's not going to crack and break quite as easily on you. I think it's just going to give you some more durability for this one. And sometimes I am, you know, when I'm talking about M3 hardware on a smaller frame, what we're looking for here is uh, kind of just, uh, you know, a really close in piece of carbon where they drill through here. If it's too close to this M3 bolt, you can have a crack right here or right here. But it looks like we have at least two to three millimeters on both sides right there where this pressure point might be. And that may be the weak link in this frame. So overall, I, I had a fun time with it. Um, do I think it's good? I, I think it's pretty good. I, I'm also happy to see that this one came back around uh, for a new, newly designed version of the Stinger B uh, from 2016. It's kind of uh, retro and new again with the DJI 03 on here. And the fact that it has GPS is also kind of nice. Uh, I've been really enjoying GPS on smaller drones recently with all the kind of advancements inside Betaflight. Um, and the fact that it'll return to home within 300 foot radius now really makes a big difference uh, for close proximity flying, which I think this one is. This one's not really, you know, how far can you go on eight minute flight time? Uh, this one's mostly for close in mild cinema or freestyle. Just one of those kind of fun under 250 gram drones that you can rip and be able to fly this one anywhere. And if the cops pull up and say, hey man, what are you doing flying that drone? You don't have a remote ID on there. Just tell them that this one is under 250 grams uh, and that you're you know, pretty good to fly it anywhere as long as you're not in a no fly zone. Uh, but I, I think overall, like I, you know, again, I hate it on the, uh, the M3 bolts and the M2s, but again, it does give it more rigidity. It has dual arm replaceable arms and that kind of min miniature long body design here, but it is again, nice that it's, it's quiet. It has a decent tune on here. It flew pretty good. Uh, I felt like it could use a little more power at the top end of the throttle for climbing up those really tall trees for those big dives. But I think you'll enjoy flying it for uh, mild to, to medium style freestyle. I don't think it's anything like a five inch ripper. Uh, it's not gonna go crazy wild, you know, balls to the wall freestyle, but it would be a good trainer for people who want to learn and then move up and progress to a five inch. Um, and, th and that's, you know, that's what I think about that, but you know, it should be fairly durable because it's super light. Uh, also one recommendation, if you get this one, it comes with this sort of TPU printed strap right here, which feeds through itself and buckles. And I wasn't a fan of that. It does lighten it up. It is lighter than a standard style strap, but I wanted something a little longer to accommodate like a 4S850. This will fit the 550 battery that they recommend, uh, but it's up to you. It, it comes off with these two bolts right here um, and take the back ones off and it'll just come right off. Um, so it's, you know, this is, this is okay. It does keep it a little bit lighter, but again, like I would probably just get a longer strap uh, if you can find one on Amazon or somewhere. But overall, yeah, I'd give it about, uh, I'd say about a 4.2 out of five. Uh, not the best quad I've ever flown, but it is nice and compact. And I love to see that they release this as a dead cat with no props in view. So I really don't feel like it needs an action camera or anything. You just mount up a battery to it, go rip it in your backyard or take it out for some proximity flying. And you know, if you're out there a little further out, 
you get to a low battery state, you can set this up to return home. And now, since this one is a proximity flyer, it's nice to have a little GPS on there. So if you're flying like a ridge line or cliffs or anything like that, you go into fail safe, it'll go up and come back to you instead of falling down the side of the cliff, which I have lost these in the Pacific Ocean before uh, at the three inch size. So it's not fun to lose video or signal out there when you're over water. Um, but yeah, and you know, if I could get picky about it for one second, um, I, you know, one of the, the cons about it for me, and, and this is not a deal breaker, but you know, since the invention of the X frames way back when around 2013 or so, uh, we have seen some of these VBAT terminals sticking out the sides of quads. And you know, I'm not a huge fan of that. I like the back mount VBAT so that the battery cable comes out the back. This one comes out the front, which is not, you know, it's not a deal breaker, but it, it could be compromised here in, in a hard crash. So that, that's something to think about with this particular design. If they had a side plate that would kind of go around it like this and give it a little bit of scraggle protection um, from those hard hits, that would definitely be a good thing because these PCBs, um, they are fairly fragile and they will break. So um, just keep that guarded up and you should be good. Uh, and yeah, get a little longer strap. You'll have fun with this one. You can check it out in the video description link um, to Newbie Drones website. And that's about all I got to say about this one. I think I, uh, I like it. It was fun. Again, about 4.2 stars out of five. It was fun. It has a decent tune. It's light. Um, could use a little more power. But then again, it's not a five inch, right? And you can fly this one anywhere without remote ID. I appreciate you guys watching. I'm Justin Davis, and I will see you on the next one.